Good morning and welcome to Emmanuel's family message. I invite you now to make the sign of the cross as we remember our baptism and we begin in the Lord's name, in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'd like to share with you the psalm that is for this Sunday. It is the 23rd Psalm, and it's a psalm that's often associated with the words and the uh, Good Shepherd Sunday, that Jesus is our Good Shepherd. But the 23rd Psalm begins this way. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his namesake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The 23rd Psalm. Some of the imagery that you will hear this weekend in worship has much to do with the imagery and the idea of a big feast. And we're certainly coming up to some times in the year where we have big feasts at home. The 23rd Psalm talks about the Lord, this good shepherd, preparing the table before me. And maybe sometimes when we think about preparing a table, we think of things like plates and cups and, and silverware. And they're neatly laid out and arranged so that as we all sit down, we might enjoy this feast. And certainly that is some of the imagery that is given. And we know that we have a God who loves us who provides for our daily needs. Not only does he walk with us and lead and guide us to gentle waters and green pastures, he provides our daily needs. So to say that the Lord prepares a table before me, that's a true statement because every earthly blessing we have is from him. There's also the imagery of a cup overflowing. Most of us stop when that cup gets to the top. But that overflowing image of a cup is a reminder of God's overflowing grace and his love to us in our lives. So we know that the Lord provides for our earthly needs, and, and we're thankful for that. It's one of the reasons that when we sit down at the table, we fold our hands and we give thanks. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. In his love, his mercy endures forever, we pray. But in the church... As Christians, as children, as those baptized in the waters of baptism, those made new creations, we also have some different ideas when it comes to that sitting down at the table imagery, the feast imagery, the cup overflowing imagery. We're reminded that the only way that we can sit at God's table is because of what Jesus has done for us. He makes us worthy to sit there. Nothing in our lives is, is good enough to be in God's presence, yet Jesus comes along, he makes us his children, he sheds his blood on the cross for us, he forgives us our sins that we might sit at his table. One of the ways in the church that we might see that imagery of the feast and the overflowing uh, cup of God's grace and his mercy, his forgiveness, comes in the Lord's Supper. Now, I've got out the chalice and the pat and the, the items that we might see when things were normal. Now we're serving with little cups to keep everybody safe. But this imagery of the Lord's Supper is not just imagery. Something is really happening. When God prepares the table, his word is spoken and it connects to bread and wine. And when Christ says, this is my body, this is my blood, that is truly what we are receiving, what we receive when we stand before the Lord's table. We receive Christ's body and blood for the forgiveness of our sins. That's a table that was prepared for us on the tree of the cross. When Jesus spread out his arms and died, that's what he was doing. He was preparing this table. This table that you've experienced in this life has received uh, body and his blood in the, in the wine, but also 
a feast that is yours eternally because you are his child, made so in the waters of baptism, continue to be fed and nourished through his word and the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. When you are older, you will come and receive exactly what parents and other adults in the church are receiving. We're reminded of this overflowing cup of God's love and his mercy, the overflowing cup of his forgiveness of sins. That's what comes to us. And the whole thing re is reminded, we're all, it all wraps up the 23rd Psalm. It says, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever, not just sitting at his table, but living in God's house because he loves you and he continues to love you with a great love that points you always to Jesus. And so while he provides for our daily needs, when we sit down at the table with family and friends, that food is God's blessing, his gift to us for our nourishment, but also spiritually through the Lord's Supper, the waters of holy baptism, and God's word proclaimed to us. God is feeding and nourishing. He's preparing the table. He's overflowing the cup for you. And he does it through Jesus. I pray that you and your family might talk about that and realize those times in your life where God certainly provides all of your earthly blessings, but also to know daily that you've been loved with this great love of Jesus, and it's his forgiveness that overflows in your life every day. Would you join me in prayer? Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the 23rd Psalm and your words that speak to us, reminding us that you are our shepherd, Father, you lead and guide and protect us, and we thank you for that. But Father, especially we give thanks for the table prepared for us, not just daily in our daily bread, but Father, the eternal table that we are invited to sit around because of your Son, Jesus Christ. Father, thank you for your love, your mercy, and your forgiveness that is ours in him. Thank you, Father, for this, and bless us in the week ahead. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, God be with you, and now if I might send you off for the benediction, the Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you, or look upon you with his favor and give you peace, peace that is yours because of Jesus. Well, blessings until we're all together again next time.